Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. What the heck? So the title of this talk is Between a Rock, Between a Rock and a Hard Place. That's a old metaphor. I mean, we all use it all the time. We were just repeat it, but we don't know what it means. <laughs> Caught between a rock and a hard place. What do you do? This is Zen. Zen always dumps you out right there. If you're going to practice Zen, you're going to you're going to end up. You're going to be dumped out right there, where nothing you do is any good. So you've got to create something. So you've got you've got to make a leap into the unknown and be what you've never been before, and think what you've never thought before and see what you've never thought before. So the rock in a hard place forces you to do something, but you don't know what to do because you can't choose between a rock and a hard space. So let's uh, talk about, uh, so let's, let's go back to a real event. Uh, I'm uh, commenting on uh, a recent article in our local paper where uh, religious school, optional, uh, has uh, been restarted in Blackstone after COVID, and it's it's been here before. But the superintendent voted against it, but the school board voted unanimously to restore religious training or teaching in public schools. And they have a little house out there where the kids go to. I posted a picture of it. And um, so, what's going on here? Uh, uh, people say, yes, oh, thank God. People say, no, no, what's going on? Uh, what, this is the rock in the hard place. <laughs> so, I want, so I wrote a piece this morning and I wanted to talk about what's really going on here. Uh, is it just an isolated, or is this part of the national turmoil? Is this just a little, is Blackstone just a little, is it just a little drop in a wider storm, you see? What's going on here? Um, so the way I look at this is is between two ways of knowing, uh, re a religious way of knowing and an empirical way of knowing. Now, we have to understand that public schools, American education, is empirical, and that is, it's rational, it's scientific in the sense that uh, it, it's evidence-based, it's objective, it's about the world out there that is, that, that, that is, operates under laws and even English. I mean, you go to English class and you learn the grammar, you learn the laws of your language, subject, verb, object, adjectives, adverbs, first, second, third person, complex, compound sentences, you know, you learn all the laws. It's not just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no laws, you see. And so also, but the, but the objective rule, world is uncertain in that it's always being discovered. Every theory, scientific theory, every scientific law uh, is subject to doubt and revision. So it evolves. We're constantly improving through rational investigation and everything. So this is this is our secular world. This is this is the modern world. The, this is the the world that was born in the sixteenth century with Newton and Descartes and the scientific method in the end of the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages Subjectivity, well, let's get into subjectivity. So religious values are subjective because they're personal. In other words, if I have a religious value, it's value, it's a, it's a value to me. So it's subjective. It's subjective. It's my value. And as a religious value held by faith, it's certain. So I don't doubt my religious values. I don't doubt, you see. I don't subject it to empirical evidence. But you can see right there, this is the great rock in the hard place. 
So on the right, well, on the on the empirical side, on social media, for instance, there's constant conflict between the Bible, certainty, faith, religious values, and questioning. Well, is Noah's Ark? What, what was the flood? Flood cover the whole planet? How did the kangaroos get on the ark? <laughs> That's empirical. You know, where's the evidence? You see. And on the left, or the on the on the religious side, well, you don't need evidence. It's a matter of faith. So the the, the whole idea on the religious certainty. But that's personal value that I feel certain and secure because I have, I, I hold to these values which is held by my church, you see. So the church then becomes a Noah's Ark. And whereas the Noah's Ark is, is moored on a cosmic mountain of God, you see. So my church, my Noah's Ark is certain, is saved from death of the modern world because it's anchored to a cosmic mountain, you see. Mount Earth or whatever, it's a cosmic mountain. It's, it's above the floods, it can't be moved. It's certain, it's a rock, you see. But then the empirical method, based on evidence, is a completely different way of knowing is a completely different way of inquiring. So these two don't mix. It's like two hands trying to clap. <laughs> but the problem is in our culture today, in America particularly, it doesn't seem to be a problem in Europe, but in America, these two ways of knowing are put on the same soccer field. We're putting religious way of knowing, faith, certainty, which is subjective, on the playing field of the objective knowledge, which is empirical knowledge, which is science, which is questioning, you see, which is based on evidence. Can you prove it? The law we have today is all based on that. You go to court and you have to prove your case with evidence, not by faith. Well, it's true because I believe it. You get thrown out of court. <laughs> so these are two fundamentally different ways of knowing, subjective, objective. And in America today, we're putting them on the same playing field and putting them up together and asking in public education then, we're asking, well, the children you choose, which is true. Remember when the, in the evolution and creative design keeps popping up, the first time it really became national was in the 30s with the monkey trials. And evolution lost and it went kind of under, underground, it went away, went to sleep. Fundamentalism lost, you know, but then it reawoke and with, with, the, uh, with the rise of the modern GOP who invited the religious viewpoint into politics, into the, the government. So, so, so the GOP We'll say we're the party of family values, God, and freedom, you see. Well, family values and God are religious viewpoints. <laughs> well, maybe not family values, but religious. God is a religious viewpoint. So now we're going to put, put two different ways of knowing in the same school, on the same school. So that's like taking a soccer field and putting a religious team against a secular team and the religious team can't lose because their their rightness is certain for the secular team it's uncertain who's going to win i mean you you got to prove the winner through competition by playing by the rules but the religious team doesn't play by the same rules that the secular team plays by because they can't lose <laughs> Because they're moored to a cosmic mountain. They can't, their ark can't sink. It's inconceivable to lose 
your values, you see. It's inconceivable to lose my religious values because I'm anchored in them. So when I put that uh, Noah's Ark, you see, on a, say, an ocean with a secular ship, Noah's Ark, who are playing by rules, you see. So you got a soccer team. I'm jumping around here, but you got the soccer team who is playing by the rules of soccer, and you got the religious team who's playing by different rules. So what's going to happen is that the religious team, if it begins to lose, will shoot the other team. Because <laughs> it can't lose, you see. It's inconceivable to lose. So it will never give up. It will keep playing. Even though they've, well, you know, if you look at the political thing, you know, with today between Trump, Trump is, Trump, Trumpers are playing like a religious team. They can't lose. And if they do lose empirically, or oh, there's the evidence, we counted the votes, they don't believe it. It's, it's rigged. And so this contradiction between values are ways of knowing that I'm not saying religious way of knowing is wrong, it's just on the wrong field. <laughs> We put them together. They're totally different. And they must remain separate. That's what church and state are two different ways of knowing. And the founding fathers knew you can't mix church and state. It's a toxic mix. You, can, you can't mix these two ways of knowing. Secular and religion. Faith versus science. You can't mix them. Uh, the, the Middle Ages mixed them. The science of the Middle Ages was alchemy. And the, al the alchemist was kind of like a poet scientist. He would experiment, but he couldn't share the experiments with anyone else, other scientists because he was all mixed up in it. It was personal. It was a personal thing. So the scientist, the alchemist scientist could not be separated from his experiment. So the scientific method came along with Descartes and Newton, etc. And they separated them. Boom, Descartes. Religion is over there. Subjective. They've got their churches. They're over there. Science is over here. Science, the domain of science is the objective world. And the domain of religion is the subjective world. And they're separate. And this held until the last century, particularly in America. So what fell apart? So now the desire is to put them back together. Put religion and science back together. And it's toxic. <laughs> it ends up in civil war. And it ends up in people going crazy and having mass shootings. You have, it's like eruptions of, of frustration erupting in violence everywhere because of these two incompatible ways of knowing being jammed together in one playing field in one society and they don't mix the only way for them for the for it to be solved is for america to become iran and be run by clerics and you can see what's happening in Cler in iran because there's a there's a, an eruption of secular, of, of the secular or empirical way of knowing in a religious society. Anyway, so I, I use this little uh, example of teaching religion in Backstone again uh, as a, uh, as a uh, between a rock and a hard place because that's where it puts the students. It's like, oh, well, let's, let's put creative design in the science class. We'll teach creative design, and we'll teach evolution, and let the students decide. They can't decide. <laughs> but it creates neurosis because they don't know which is true. Either what my, what the, the, either my family values or social values. The two different, they don't mix, you see. Two ways of knowing. Anyway, so I hope I've exhausted this topic. So have a great Thanksgiving.
<laughs> Thanks for dropping in.